Hi and welcome back to another Sky Practice. Today I'm going to be painting this um, Cornish seascape. Um, lovely sunny day with um, a storm, rain clouds blowing in. Those of you that are regulars to the channel know that um, skies are the favorite, my favourite part of any painting, um, any landscape painting, and um, I practice my skies if I can nearly every day, either um, a specific planned scene or something from my imagination or just an experiment. And today I was thinking of um, North Cornwall, the most beautiful beaches where uh, we used to go um, every several times every year um, for holidays when my daughter was small. So I was thinking of the beautiful yellow sandy beaches and the blue sky and the changeable weather actually of Cornwall, which is one of the things that makes it so amazing. Um, today I'm going to be painting on Milford 100% cotton cold press paper. It's taped to my board. My board's at an angle of about 45 degrees so that gravity will help me paint. So I've got some masking tape to keep my horizon lines straight. And I've just started off with a weak mixture of raw sienna. And now this is Prussian blue with a bit of, little bit of indigo in it. And I'm painting this wet into wet. I wet the sky first. And now I'm going to get my storm clouds in. This is a mixture of Payne's Grey, indigo, um, sepia. I've probably picked up a bit of Prussian blue in there as well. Oh. So I'm going to really darken the whole area up. And what I'm going to try and do is just get this dark foreboding cloud if I can. So don't worry if it looks a bit, a bit dark when it first goes in. I'm going to use the water spray. Um, and spray it and get the water, the paint to flow wet in wet down the page. I can then tip and tilt my board and hopefully get that cloud where I want it. So that's the water spray. You can see that the paint is starting to move as my board's at an angle. So before it hits the, um, the tape, the masking tape, I turn it round, mop up any spills as I go and watch it carefully and keep tip, tipping and tilting various different angles until I get it looking the way I want it to look. I can put my board flat if I want it to stay in that position, in that the wash to sort of stay like that. That stops it from moving. And then I can use a clean tissue just to very gently lift out a little bit of the excess water that's pooling in the middle. And this is helping to give me just a few sort of light clouds as well. And that was all done with the large Pro Arch Ron Ranson Harky brush. Um, and um, once I've lifted out the excess water, then I shall remove the masking tape across the horizon line, um, just to see where I am. And I think that's looking okay. Just before everything dries, I'm just going to um, lift the board up to 45 degrees again and allow some of that uh, Prussian blue to run down just to meet the horizon. And I can very carefully with a clean tissue work around those lifted areas and very delicately, because I don't want to lift out too much, uh, just lift out a bit more of a sort of a light um, cloud area around the edges of that big storm cloud. then I can feather that blue paint along the horizon, soften it out, keep it nice and flat. And then maybe just um, a few more adjustments to make. So I'm going to lay my board flat to dry and just a few tiny wispy bits again, lifted out with the tissue. And now it's time to walk away and not fiddle anymore so that it stays looking fairly fresh and let it dry completely. So here it is, I've got my board at 45 degrees again. Uh, it's not perfect, I've got a bit of a dark mark in the top right, but I'm not worried, this is a sky practice. So um, I'm going for the overall sort of freshness of it. I've put some masking tape on across my horizon again, but across the top, and now I'm using my large 
Pro Art Harky brush with that mixture of Prussian blue and a little bit of indigo in it. Um, and I'm pulling it across for some dry brush horizontally and that will give me light reflecting on my sea. What I want to do as well is I want to get in some shadow from the clouds, particularly on this side. So I'm quickly getting that in, wet in wet. I want to still make sure I keep plenty of dry brush sparkle and then just describe or suggest some little waves and the beach. So I'm trying to keep it really fresh here. And then some raw sienna dragged in with my three quarter inch synthetic flat brush for the beach. As well as the dry brush sparkle on the water, I want to keep some sort of strips of unpainted paper between the beach and the shore, the seashore, so that that kind of gives me an indication of light reflecting on the waves as they lap against the shore. So I'm just feathering through with the flat brush just to try and sort of even things out a little bit more and just to try and get that suggestion of the beach without too much detail. Let's take off the masking tape and see how that looks. And I think that's okay. And now we can see how the um, horizon looks. I can make a few adjustments and just balance the sea area out a bit more, but being careful not to overwork it because it's looking nice and fresh. So I want to keep it that way. So now this is some sepia and uh, burnt sienna into the raw sienna beach just to add a bit of tone, a bit of richness. And the flat brush is really useful for this. I can use the belly of the brush and then switch to the tips of the brush for different shapes and different brush strokes, um, just to sort of feather and blend things in, um, just as a few finishing touches. And I think I'm quite happy with that as a quick sort of less than 10 minute sky practice. If there's any advice that I could um, offer to you about doing these sky practices is don't get bogged down with things being perfect. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you're learning about what your paint will do, how the water reacts with it, um, sort of the timing of the paper, water ratios in your paint and in your brush. And to be quite honest, the things that actually go wrong in your painting are the things that actually teach you the most. So practice helps you to understand what to do, but also to understand what not to do and to try to sort of take those ideas and thoughts into your next painting practice. So I think what I'm happy with here is the light in the sky and the light on the sea um, from that dry brush. And of course, what I'm less happy with is that little mark top right in the sky, that dark streak. And I think I might, might have caught the edge of the harky brush, the wooden part, and scratched the paper a little bit there when I was putting in the wash. So that's something for me to look out for in my next sky practice. Well, I hope that was helpful. Um, if you are interested in more of the sky practices, then have a look at my playlists. And there is a playlist for sky practices with plenty more there. So thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group um, who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.